Hello, and welcome to another episode of Levy's Customs. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Plex Pass, what it is, and do you really need it? So, what is a Plex Pass? Plex Pass is a subscription add-on for Plex that adds a bunch of features, some of which you may be interested in. So let's go ahead and take a look at their main page for Plex Pass. All right, so we see right here they say upgrade for five bucks a month. Um, we're not going to go over too much of this because there's a little bit more detail in some articles we're going to be going over. But if we scroll down here, so monthly for five dollars or you can pay annually for 40 bucks a year or for 120 dollars you can get a lifetime pass so you never have to pay again so now we're going to take a look at plex's support article about the plex pass it's just an overview there are things that they don't mention in this particular article that we'll go to another article for and there are even some things that they don't mention in any of these articles that we'll be going over so the first thing that they list as you being able to do is pretty much have your Plex server be a DVR for live TV, whether it be through cable or over the air. I haven't done this yet, but it is something I'm very interested in. So I will eventually be getting a TV tuner for my server. Next up is downloads and syncing and what that means is you can download either an original copy or a transcoded copy, something that's either small or whatever to, to save space, and have it download to your either your phone, a computer, tablet. And I actually use this quite a bit because uh, I listen to a lot of music, and even though my cell phone carrier says that my plan is unlimited data, they usually start to heavily reduce your speeds at around 20 to 25 gigabytes so having all my music downloaded to my phone really helps out with that plex labs is interesting it is almost like a beta in a way for some things where they will be testing it out on plex pass users but some of their things like plex dash which is a server management app for phones and Plex Amp, which is more of a, a music-centric app. You can't play any of your video files or look at any of your pictures from this app, but it is more like Spotify or Pandora, something more music-focused, and it's just overall a lot better experience than the regular Plex app. Premium music features is something else you can get with the Plex Pass, and for me, I haven't messed with it too much. I do like the loudness leveling. The sweet fades are kind of eh. Sometimes they they work well. Sometimes they just butcher what's going on. Premium photo features, which I haven't messed with too much. I have actually just started to add some photos to my server, but it offers some interesting stuff like auto tagging and uh, location information. One of the biggest features for Plex Pass is hardware accelerated streaming. And what that is, is instead of your CPU, your processor in your Plex server doing the transcoding, your graphics processor, whether it be a integrated graphics chip, uh, something like on an Intel or AMD APU, or a dedicated graphics card from AMD or Nvidia. I'm not gonna go too much into hardware accelerated streaming. I'll be doing another video on that at some point. Custom sharing restrictions, pretty much you being able to customize how you want to share your content on your server. Next up is bandwidth and transcoding limits. And pretty much what that is, is you can change the resolution and bitrate of the file that you're wanting to send out to uh, external clients outside of your own network. And I actually have to use this because my upload speed here in my apartment is not that great. It's around 20 megabits a second upload. And so what I have to do is actually in the server settings, 
I have to limit each stream to 720p around 4 megabits a second. Early access, so like I was saying before with the, the Plex Labs, sometimes they will throw some new features at you if you have a Plex Pass that you can use. One of the things I remember was they were first introducing thumbnail previews on the video timeline and so for Plex Pass owners we got early access to that uh, to kind of test it out and everything uh, which is pretty cool. So the next thing on the list is free access to Plex apps and we'll go over this a little bit more here in a second but what that means is for mobile devices like your phone you do not have to pay any type of fee to use the app. All right, and like I said, they have a second support article here talking about free versus paid, which is going to be very important because this will help you decide really whether you need Plex Pass or not. I'm just gonna go over these fairly briefly and then we'll talk about a little bit more later. So here are some of the things that you can do for free. You can host all your own media, which is awesome so for its core function you do not have to have a plex pass the plex media server is free to use and includes the plex web app something i haven't really covered on this channel yet is plex's free media streaming stuff they have movies and tv shows that are free and ad supported they also have live tv that is ad supported as well and you do not need the plex pass to view any of that we talked about the DVR function of Plex that's included in the Plex Pass, but if you don't have a Plex Pass, you can still use a tuner and, you know, either connect it to your cable or over the air antenna, and you can still watch live TV for free. The DVR function comes with the Plex Pass, though. There's some other stuff like podcasts and web shows that are free for everyone, 30 second previews of title songs. Plex is very involved with title, it's one of their partners and so they, you know, trying to get you to sign up for it. And now here's what I wanna talk about their apps. As you can see here, most of their apps are free to use. And what I mean by that, here down at the bottom, for a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, if you do not pay, I think it's like $5, you have to pay to unlock the full app once you download it. And if you don't, you can still technically use it, but it limits everything to one minute of view time and then pictures have watermarks. And here's another section of paid stuff. If you really wanna look through all this, um, I will be putting all the links that I've used in this video down in the description. Uh, most of it is the same, but there's some extra stuff. And that's kind of where I wanted to go from here. They don't specify certain things in their support articles, the f like a full list, I should say. One of those being you can share your entire media library for free with anyone and I think that's pretty cool. They don't put that feature behind a paywall. Something else too is there are some server options and uh, utilities that you can't get in uh, using Plex for free and you can only get it in the Plex Pass. And that is one of the things is your dashboard. You can see a lot of stuff with the Plex Pass, kind of your server statistics, your bandwidth, either remote or local your CPU usage, your memory usage, and you get some of this cool stuff down here. Uh, to, you know, history, you can go in and say, hey, what has this person been watching or listening to, which I think is pretty cool. But if we switch over to a, a free account, this is all you get on your dashboard. You can see what people are playing, you can see you know, kind of the statistics of that file being played, but there isn't any anything else. This is it. And that's kind of that way on a couple other things when it comes to the server. So those are kind of the differences between using Plex for free and paying for a Plex Pass. Now the question is, 
do you really need a Plex Pass? A short and simple answer would be no. I really don't think you need a Plex Pass unless you have very limited upload speed and you're planning on sharing it with a bunch of people outside your network. If you are needing hardware transcoding ability, then this is definitely something that you're gonna want. And another thing is the HDR function. A lot of people say that when using Plex, when transcoding HDR content to SDR, so high dynamic range to standard dynamic range, Plex Pass offers a better way of converting them and, and tone mapping. I'm not exactly sure, I don't have any HDR content, but I have heard that a lot of people use the Plex Pass because of that feature. And I feel like for a lot of new Plex users, starting out free and just seeing if you're willing to commit to having a server going and everything would probably be best before spending any type of money, especially if you had to buy hardware and everything to get your Plex server set up. For me, like I said, the downloading of content for my phone is pretty important. I've recently started using hardware accelerated encoding for times that I'm using my server for other non-plex things. And because I'm a huge nerd and I love to monitor my server, Plex Dash, which I'll be doing a video soon about, uh, Plex Dash is pretty much a server app for your phone. You can kind of check on it, see who's watching stuff, see how your server's doing in terms of your bandwidth, CPU usage, memory usage, and then there's some other things that are useful about it too. And also just being able to see all the statistics and everything I think is just, I enjoy using that. Uh, Plex Amp, the music amp, uh, application, to me is, is way better than the default regular Plex app. It's a lot more stable and it's just overall a better experience. So what do you think about the Plex Pass? Is it worth it? Do you have a Plex Pass? Let me know down in the comments. And that about wraps it up. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up. If you didn't, hit thumbs down. Even though the dislike counter is gone, I still can see how many dislikes I get and I take that into consideration. Also hit the subscribe button as I will be doing a lot more Plex videos here in the future. I've mostly used Plex in a basic fashion for the last four years I've been hosting this and I have a lot to learn, a lot of new things, and so you can come along with me and learn. Also consider joining me on Patreon as that would help with this channel a lot. And with that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.